recently a six-year-old female came to me for treatment for severe hyperhidrosis or sweating of the hands and the feet. While she lived in Europe, her mother took her to see a physician for treatment and they tried her on dry sol first and that didn't really make any difference in the severe sweating. And then she tried an anticholinergic medication and that also did not help her very much. The sweat would just drip uh, off of her palms, off of her fingers, onto, onto her clothing, onto her, her books, uh, on things around her, and run down her arm if she held her hands up. And also during these sweating episodes, her fingers specifically would become very cold. And this happened several times a day, day after day after day, for the most part, for five of the last six years of her life. Her mother relates this, The reason for us traveling to Texas and be operated by Dr. Nielsen is because he is the only one that can carry out a micro-ETS on my six-year-old daughter due to the technique he has developed and which is carried out uniquely by him. And this is what one of her teachers wrote about her uh, in observing how she would behave and act, therefore, at school. I am writing on behalf of a six-year-old in my class. As one of her teachers, I am in close contact with her approximately seven hours a day and am able to observe her in a variety of settings and situations. Her condition, hyperhidrosis, affects her learning in many ways. From the difficulties of grasping her pencil to the constant tearing of paper due to excess moisture, and the sweat marks on the tables, her condition is ever-present and challenging. In social situations, whether greeting visitors or classmates with a handshake, her condition requires her to be constantly aware of her difference and the reaction she encounters. Even recess becomes an obstacle as favorite activities such as climbing the jungle gym, navigating the monkey bars, and swinging are made far more difficult and dangerous with a slippery grasp. I know firsthand the long-term effects on self-esteem, as my sister struggled with the same condition, not knowing what it was or that it could be helped until she was 39. My hope is for her to avoid the erosion of self-confidence and self-esteem during the already tumultuous years of adolescence not too far off. For her to get treatment early will help her avoid frustration and humiliation during her critical developmental years and ensure her the wonderful start in life everyone deserves. Now, this is a, a group of pictures of her wet hands and fingers taken two weeks ago. You can see the wet, the moisture, dampness on her palms and on the fingers, and the sweat running from her palms down her arms towards her elbow. Then she went into micro ETS in the operating room, which as I put her to sleep with the anesthesiologist, you can see the procedure's done. You can see the brain waves measured by this and monitored by this neural monitor, abyss monitor. It shows the sleep state. And then after we finished, she quickly woke right up and was taken to the recovery room. Here's a close up of the neural monitor. It's pretty cool seeing how the neural input that we get or output that we get helps us to see how to titrate specifically the amount of anesthesia to put her deeply asleep and then allow her to wake immediately up right after the procedure is finished. Her hands before the surgery, before we put her to sleep, you can see that her right hand was 86.2 degrees and her left 85.5 and then I did the micro ETS procedure through a single 1 12th inch incision in the underarm on each side. And immediately after, as you can see from this picture of the one of the monitors of the temperatures, that her right hand warmed up to 96.4 degrees and her left hand to 96.8. This is a picture of her right palm immediately following the sympathectomy. This is before we woke her up. You can see that the skin of her palms and fingers is completely dry. Here's this picture of the left palm showing a similar dryness of the hand with the fingers being dry and certainly significantly warmer than they were beforehand.
This is an incision on the right side after I closed it with a little Dermabond. The Dermabond stays on the skin for about five to seven days. Helps to protect the small incision. It reapproximates the skin edges and it makes for a minimal scar or scarring. Here's a similar picture of the left side prior to closure or reapproximation of the incision with Dermabond. And this is showing the Dermabond after its application. The following day after surgery in my office, you can see this is her complete dry hands, palms, fingers. Here's a close-up showing how the skin is pinker and that it's completely dry and warm. Now this is a comparison of her hands, what they looked like two weeks before, the, the dampness, the moist hands. And there's even some skin maceration on one of the fingers you can see of her right hand. And then, then you compare it to, to the photos on the right showing how the hands and specifically the skin looked the day following micro ETS. Here's a picture of the dorsal aspect of the palms or of the hands. Here's a close-up showing the hands completely dry. Now one week after the micro ETS procedure, her mother reported to me the following. I was very excited to hear her go to school and see more interaction with others and easier time with paper and writing objects. She is walking around proud of her new situation, telling her little story of her trip to Texas to her friends and teachers.